Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, what am I doing here today? I've got a jack under here, up on a ramp at the back. Got a wheel off, maybe I'm doing a pad replacement or something, a bit of suspension work. No, I'm changing a light bulb, yeah, I'm changing, changing the xenon bulb and the igniter. Got brand new ones of both here. Now it's an easy job if you know what you're doing. Now, I didn't know what I was doing and I spent absolutely hours trying to do it. But there's an easy trick to this and a few things that might catch you out. Now, the TIS doesn't help the technical information system from BMW. It doesn't change, tell you how to change this or anything. It's absolutely useless. So let's go through absolutely every step, all the little tricks I'm going to use to make it a lot easier. OK, so if you follow exactly what I do, then you have no problem at all. We'll warn you, it's quite difficult getting the camera in here, which is why I've removed the wheel. You can actually do it by just turning the, the wheel towards the inside of the light you're doing, and then you should have no problem at all. But I've removed the wheel just so that you can see what I'm doing. Right, let's get on with it. Oh, yeah, first of all, obviously you need the bulb, which is a DS, a D2S and that's the right part number 63126919886 for the igniter unit it's best to change both when the bulbs fail they quite often take out the igniter unit so let's get on with it righty ho well the first thing we do is obviously remove the access cover all we need is a 10 millimeter socket for this they're not done up all that tight, they're just into sort of sheet metal or even plastic, I can't remember which. Now the cover's meant to come off and drop down and it has a plastic band on it to uh, hold it in position. But I notice mine hasn't got it. Well, it has got it, it's got half of it. It's meant to sort of hang there like that. But now the stra <laughs> strap's broken, so that's out. Right, here we go then. With the cover off, we get to the xenon cover itself. There's a couple of little bits up here, just pinch them together. I'll try and do it so you can see what I'm doing. There you go, pinch between there and there, give it a pinch, pull it off, and there we go. And now we're on to the igniter. Now this is a bit confusing, and uh, if you, it's quite easy. You can see that it says open and close on it. And when you turn it and it comes out, you think, that wasn't connected. Now, I should have realised this at the start, but it's certainly something to remember that when you take this off, anti-clockwise turn, here we go, the connector drops out. It's meant to do that. It's a safety feature, so you can't power this on with the igniter in place. So a slight turn anti-clockwise, wiggle it around a bit and it will come out. I'll try and get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. He's out. Now, what confused me, because I thought, oh, this is easy. We just plug this back in before I actually fit it back on. No, don't do that. That won't go on with the connector on. It's designed specifically so that you can't do it. So that confused me for absolutely hours. Uh, but there you go, you live and learn. That's always the thing with these jobs. I'll zoom you out slightly. No, I think you're okay there. OK, so the next thing we've got is that's the bulb itself and it's got a collar around it and the collar just turns slightly anti-clockwise and that will release the xenon bulb. Now, the xenon bulb may drop out, so you don't want it to actually fall down anywhere. So the best thing to do is turn this slightly anti-clockwise, then hold on to both of them. So I'm going to try this. It's very difficult to do this with the camera on. I'll try and reposition you, actually. There we go. Well, I'm not getting any closer than that, am I? That's a nice, a nice close-up. Okie doke. So here's the collar. Here's the bulb. What we'll do is we'll turn it anti-clockwise. Now, it's obviously going to be awkward to do while the camera's in here, but I'll, I'll try and do it. Right. Anti-clockwise. I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Hold on to the bulb and pull the whole thing out. Take note that it actually says top on it right there that's important to remember and also the the bulb has got a keyway on it okay so i've got the bulb out that just pulls out of the cap 
out of the ring. So here's the bulb. It's got a metal bit which goes towards the bottom. And when it actually fits in, it has a keyway at the top that locates. There we go, that's located there. There's two ways you can do this. You can put the bulb in first with always the possibility it's going to drop out or put it onto the collar. Now, what I've been doing is getting the collar. All getting a bit close. There's the top mark on it, just there. We know that's the top. We know which is the top and bottom of the bulb because it's got a keyway at the top. So what I do is I fit the bulb into the collar so that it's got the tops at the top, if you see what I mean. And I'll slide it in there. And what I do is I rotate the bulb. It has clicked into position straight away. And then it's just a matter of putting the collar on and rotating it. Well, I say just a matter of. It's fiddly, I'll give you that much. There we go. I made it look very easy, but it's certainly worth practicing that a few times with the old bulb. So let me take that back out again. So anti-clockwise, sorry the camera goes out of focus, pull it out. What you can do is try practicing with the collar on its own. So it's got top marked and it's got a metal bit at the bottom. And it starts off just slightly anti-clockwise of that. So you can get this in without the bulb and have a few goes at it. Actually, it seems quite a lot easier without the bulb. There we go. So there we go. Clockwise to lock, anti-clockwise, and it comes off. And don't forget the top is marked on it. Bulb always goes with the metal bit towards the bottom because it has to fit through that hole. So I'll fit the bulb to the collar. And here we go. Get the bulb in with the collar around it. So we'll click the bulb into position. Once you know that it's got to have a keyway and it's got to go in, then you can have a good idea where it is. Collar on. Clockwise turn. That's it. It's in position. It looks easy but i'll tell you this for nothing it took me ages to practice this and now i've done it a few times it's a lot easier okay so that's the new bulb in then we've got our igniter now remember what i said that about don't plug in that connector that one which goes in that hole there because it doesn't go on it's absolutely confounded me for ages anyway we start slightly anti-clockwise from center and all we have to do is sort of wiggle it about, click it clockwise, and there you go, you're in. And then all you've got to do is fiddle the connector into place. As long as you haven't sort of twanged the connector at all, then it's going to sort of flop into the right place. So it sort of slides along this bit here to get it straight. and you sort of feel it into position and it'll go in. It's simple as that, isn't it? It's amazing. So really for me, that's more or less job done, but I'll show this connector pop out as I take it off again. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I wish I'd known that when I did it the first time because I spent hours trying to get it on with the connector in place. Now uh, these things obviously held on by just a few sort of clasps and so on. So they can be, they sort of do hold on sometimes like that one did there. So just sort of wiggle it around. Don't put any great force on it. It doesn't need any great force. It's these four legs here that sort of click into holes on the ring. So I put it in for the last time. Make sure that loom doesn't get underneath it. Wiggle it around a bit. And there we go. Locked into position and put the loom back in. I'm making it look easy, but I've done it 5,000 times now. And there we go, as simple as that. That's bulb and igniter changed. No problem at all. Right, I'm gonna zoom you out a bit. And there we go, I've zoomed you out. So the last things you do, just make sure the loom's not trapped anywhere. Make sure that's rotated correctly. Put the cover back on again, just 
lumps into the bottom there and then pushes forward should click into place if it doesn't try again there we go that's clicked into place it's easy and then of course the cover just getting 10 uh, 10 millimeter self-tapping sort of bolts uh, don't do them up too tight it's uh, what's it going into metal isn't it? it's going into a bit of sheet metal so they don't need to be done up tight and if you try and do them up tight you're just going to strip them there we go there's two of those in And there we go, Ooh, nice and lovely, everything back in its right position, super. Right, there we go then, all done. Well, apart from putting my wheel back on. Yeah, it's fiddly, I'll give you that. And it's gonna be especially fiddly with the wheel on, I should think. But now you know exactly how the collar and the light fits into this keyway and the collar has to be the right way up and how the igniter goes on, then it should be a lot easier for you. And don't, for goodness sake, put the connector into the igniter before you try and fit it on. It won't go on. And I tried for at least a couple of hours. That's cursing. I really was. And then I worked out that the connector, when you put it in, it locks this collar. And even that goes into the, uh, the light collar, it will not turn, no matter how much force you put on it. Eventually worked out, connector has to be out, and then it just clicks into place as though by magic then refit the connector. Obviously it's a bit fiddly refitting that connector up the top so have a good practice of that first of all and make it become second nature and then it'd be easy to do. Now I reckon it's going to be a bit harder with the wheel on and I've only removed the wheel so that I can get the camera in and when I do remove, re remove a wheel I always put the rear wheel if I'm working on the front one up on a ramp it takes all the strain off the front so even if my two ton jack, fa jack fails, it's not gonna land on my head. Worst it will do is gonna land on a disc. So yeah, rule number one, don't kill yourself. Rule number two, try not to break anything. Anyway, that is about it. As I say, got the part numbers. D2S uh, is the bulb for these uh, six series. And part number 63126919886 is for the igniter. Now this is obviously for a 2007, 2008 model. At some point they used a different igniter and a different method of putting the bulb in, which isn't explained at all in the TIS, uh, apart from to say that uh, when you turn the igniter, the whole lot comes out, including the bulb. It doesn't on this, as you saw. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, thanks for all the comments. I love reading the comments. Put a thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you next time.